All right, stock picks. Let's do them. This week, five as always. And, um, well, let's uh, review what happened in the market last week. Uh, it looks pretty bullish at the beginning. And then on Thursday, it started to dip down a bit, kind of trend sideways. And at the beginning of uh, Friday, it started to go up and bit dipped down. Actually, there's a chart here. Dipped down, then went back up. So it's looking a little more bullish, but volatility is still um, significant. You could say people are a bit indecisive about whether the market is going to rally or whether it's going to fall. I think it's probably going to rally and then fall. Um, we're going to continue the rally we've seen, and then the stocks will probably fall a bit. There will be some sort of correction. But we don't care. We're swing trading. I don't want to expose any of you to unlimited risk, so I'm not going to give any short positions. I'm just going to give you some stock picks for long positions. Um, this time I will also be showing you the results of the uh, Baba and Dish stock options trades I talked about before. Um, many people have sent me emails asking me about trading stock options. I can't get into that here. I have other videos. I also have courses on that subject. So if you're really interested in stock options, uh, check out my other stuff on that. I'm just going to dive right into the first stock pick and explain why this is the first stock pick. So we're going to go with Win, W Y N N. And we're going to be using stockcharts.com, free resource, very easy to use. We are swing trading, so we want to look at shorter moving averages. I like 20 and 30. And for indicators, I don't care so much about the MACD line. Uh, I, I will look at it occasionally, but I use the Arun lines. I always use the slow stochastics. and. I wish they gave you more slots here, but they only give you a three indicator slots. Uh, sometimes they go with MACD, sometimes they go with the Chai Keen oscillator. This time I'm going to go with the Chai Keen oscillator. All right? Why not? Now you know what? We'll do MACD because it's easier to interpret. I did. I think I did Chai Keen oscillator last time. It's a lot harder to understand. MACD line is much easier to understand. I'll explain it as we go. All right. So our first stock is Win. Win um, recently broke a resistance level, making it a support level. It was stuck around 72.5 for a while, as you can see. Had a long drop off, then it came back up. Um, we got an indication that we should buy it at where this uh, green Arun line crossed over the red Arun line, and then that buying signal was confirmed when it went above. The 70 mark. Now we're at an all-time high for the past um, what's our what's our for the past 25 days. So it's looking pretty good. Now the candlesticks are not that interesting, but the fact that we broke that support is interesting, and the fact that we broke it on um, a day of volume where there was a lot of selling is is also important. Um, the MACD line shows that although we have had negative momentum for a long time. We are finally getting into that positive momentum territory and it's moving up there quickly. Now even though wind has evened out over the past week or so, I think what we're seeing is what would be a kind of a weekly deliberation. If you look at the weeklies, yeah, you can see it, it's kind of a deliberation. We stepped it up and then kind of stopped at a point and I think that's gonna burst and we're gonna go upward that's my prediction here with win. So how do we want to trade this? Well, we want to be careful of the stochastics. If we see the black line dipping down and the stock price falling, it means that investors probably think win is oversold and we're buying at actually a, a top, not a bottom. But I don't think, sorry, did I say oversold? I meant to say overbought. But I think actually win is probably at an oversold level and the weeklies probably show that. You can check if a stock is at an oversold using the RSI line or the stochastics, whichever you prefer. I greatly prefer the stochastics. And if you see that the stochastic lines are below the 20 uh, horizontal line here, it's usually oversold. And once they start to break out, 
that's when the stock starts to go upward. Now, when you look at the weeklies, we're looking more at a position trade. This is something you want to hold on to for a longer term. Um, and you, when you look at the dailies, this is for swing trading. And because I give this video uh, once per week, we're basically looking at the swing trades. So the stochastics are actually giving us a bad sign here. But the fact that the black line is di divergent, you could say, it's going upward while the stock looks like well, the stock looks like it's going upward as well. Um, means that it's not that worrisome. Sometimes the, the stochastics will stay above the 80 line for a while and the stock will c continue upward. I think that's what's going to happen with Win. I'm recommending Win um, because it moves quickly. And if it does move upward and gets back to those original levels, you're looking at a very high ROI. I think that's probably what's going to be happening here. So that's win. A little more risky than most of the picks I recommend and a little more expensive, but I think overall it's a pretty pretty safe buy here, at least at the moment. Um, you're probably going to want to swing trade, of course, and get out of this after you've, you've seen some profit. I can't give you a price point, maybe 86 or so, I would get out. Now let's look at another one, Rare. So these are NASDAQ stocks. This is a pharmaceutical company. These can be very volatile, as you can see. Big growth, big uh, steps up, upward and downward. Um, these are very good for swing trading. We have a sell signal, right? Um, and we also see that the price is below the moving averages. So these are not good signs for us. Um, nor is the MACD line. But we do have two good signs. The first is the candlestick pattern. We finally see an interesting candlestick pattern here that was confirmed. What we're seeing here, if you look at the last three candlesticks, ignore the newest one and look at these two. You see a white one that's a lot bigger, well, significantly bigger in terms of the body than the red one. It's engulfing the red body. This is called a bullish engulfing candlestick. And the pattern is confirmed when the stock price opens higher and actually moves higher um, the next day, which is what we saw on Friday. So we do have that candlestick pattern. Candlestick patterns are very good for swing trading, not so good for um, position trading. But it's, it's also useful if you're an investor and you just want to know when to get in on a stock. You don't want to get in before the stock drops for a couple weeks. Uh, so we got that sing signal right there. And we also see that Rare has been oversold for quite a bit. You might not call this where it's jumped up to like 30 or 40, oversold. But when you see this kind of happening, when you've got a black line crossing above a red line and moving into the above 20 territory, that's a buy signal. So I like to say there's a, a premature buy signal and a confirmation of the premature buy signal. What we're seeing right now is the premature buy signal where the black line crosses above the red line under the 20 horizontal line. And the confirmation of that buy signal is when the black line, or some people might even say the red line, crosses above the uh, 20 line. So it depends on how conservative you want to be. You might want to watch this for a couple days and ensure that the black line does cross above 20. I'm going to say this is a pretty safe bet at the moment. Just like Win, this is a volatile stock that can give you very high profits and also very high losses. But um, I'm looking at more upside at this point than downside. I'm thinking we're going to see something similar to this, um, maybe not as extreme as lasting several months, but we might see you know a few um, of, of these successive white candlestick patterns that could bring us up to a decent price. For price target, uh, I wish I could give you something. I would say where these touch probably around 110, that's a pretty decent ROI, but it might not get so far. Um, you're going to want to use your own technical indicators to determine when to get out. Um, you could just reverse my technical in indicators if you see the opposite of that candlestick pattern where the reds and whites are replaced, or if you see uh, these uh, these lines now above the 80 level and falling below 80, usually that's a good time to sell. Look, imagine if you did that for th at this point. Check it out. 
we're just scrolling right up. So you'd be selling exactly on this day, which would be a very good decision because it fell from 130 all the way down to where it is now, which is probably a bottom. And I'm saying it's a bottom. So again, another slightly risky trade, but there is the potential for a lot of profit here. The next is IMPV. Um, this one, uh, why did I choose this one? Oh, okay, this one is very similar to the last one in that we have a nice candlestick pattern with the confirmation. So instead of having the white one eating the red one, the white one's inside this, the red one. So it's smaller this time, and this is uh, called a bullish harami. It's a, it's a Japanese candlestick pattern, and the confirmation is the same as the previous confirmation. We see the uh, following day's candlestick above the most recent candlestick, so it opened above and it closed above. That's usually a strong signal that the trend upward is going to continue. In addition, we're seeing the exact same thing. Um, the stock is probably oversold. It's probably below what the quote-unquote market price should be. Um, so, just like IMPV, this is a stock to get into. It's a bit cheaper. It's less volatile. It's less risky. It's simply a less risky version of the play I just mentioned. Now we're going to look at a longer stock, HBAYF. Longer in terms of the ticker. And perhaps I typed it wrong. Um, I don't think so. What is going on here? That's the stock. Why is it not showing up? All right, well, um, in any case, maybe Stock TA has it. Let's go to Stock TA. I don't know why it's not showing up. HBA, HBAY F. This one's cheaper on the 20 buck level. It's a very gappy stock. I like to call this a gappy stock because there's gaps all the time. Um, so my gap game plan system usually is a little iffy on this type of stock because it jumps prices every day. But if you're a swing trader, this is the type of stock you want to get in on. The main problem with this stock, though, is the volume is really low. So it's hard to liquidate. If you're in and you want to get out, you might not be able to get out on that day. So that's the risk here. Um, because we don't have the stock charts indicators, we can we just have to rely on whatever indicators we have here. I believe I originally analyzed this with a different program. Um, let's see here. Okay, we got the MACD. MACDs are upward in terms of momentum. As you can see, the stock has been going up for the past half month or so. The stochastics say that it's very bullish, which is strange because according to the full stochastics here looks like it's overbought. Um, anyway, most of these gaps will fill. But what's interesting about StockTA.com is they give you a list of the gaps. It's not always correct, by the way. Uh, I'm mainly a gap trader, so I pay very close attention to these gaps. A lot of these are incorrect, but um, it, it at least gives you a good idea where to look for gaps. And the most recent gap is this one, October 13. Look how un it's not even in order. All right, whatever. Well, the most recent gap is an area gap. October 13 did not have a high volume, and it's above us. So as a pure gap trade, we can just say this gap's going to fill. Um, but I'm sure I had some other reasons when I looked at this before. I think I looked at it here. I don't know what happened. Uh, so why don't we just say I recommend this stock, but I have no real reason to recommend it. So just skip this one. It's it's uh it's a weird one. All right. Yeah, skip that one. Okay. And the last one I want to recommend is actually one I just finished playing and I had to get out of this position. I didn't want to. I I think it's going to continue upward. But I had to get out of this position uh, because I was playing stock options on it and the stock option expired on Friday. So if I didn't sell on Friday, I would have to buy uh, a lot of stock and I didn't want to do that 
I'd rather just roll over the stock option. So I might rebuy. Um, and I'm thinking it's looking like a pretty good stock to get in on. Um, the way stock options works is uh, the closer you are to its expiration date, the more you are paying per day to hold on to that stock option. So when I first bought this really cheap dish option, I was probably only paying a couple bucks per day to hold on to that option. But by the end of last week, I was paying 30 or more bucks per day. So the stock options price was, was even though the stock was kind of uh, evening out, the stock options price was falling really quickly. So I had to sell it. And I, I probably sold it later than I should have. I could have made more money on this play, and I'll show you that in a second. But I think this is still a good buy for a couple reasons. Um, first of all, we've got that same candlestick pattern we saw before. This is the bullish harami. Uh, we got the white candlestick within the red candlestick, and we confirmed by opening and closing above that price. In addition, the current price is above the 30-day simple moving average, which is a good buying signal. The green Arun line has passed over the red Arun line and that was actually after I got in on this stock I got in around here um, but I still think it has some way to go up there's probably going to be some resistances tested but I'm imagining it hitting 66 and getting back to where it was before all of this you know bear market crap in uh, the end of October started to happen also important is the fact that the MACD lines have begun to move into positive territory, which means that now we have positive momentum on the stock. We've confirmed that, and this is a pretty good buying signal. And finally, the stochastics are not any longer above the 80 line. So what, what probably happened here was the stock gained momentum. Um, investors felt that it was overbought, and some of the people holding on to that stock just dropped it. And now it's back to a lower level. And I think that lo level, I think investors probably overreacted to the quick growth in the DISH network stock. This is DISH, by the way, the ticker. Um, so they overreacted, they sold it off, and it's probably going to continue upward. A lot of times when you see these position trading momentums, you're going to see these bumps. Like this one going downward, um, investors probably thought, oh, we are really selling a lot of this stuff it's probably oversold and you see a little bump a lot of people started to buy it at this time but that's just a little uh, bump in the momentum and it continues downward so that's probably what we're seeing we're seeing a new trend a new upward trend not sure how long it's gonna last it might last just a week I'm gonna watch this I might get back in on this because I believe I made double my money on this I'm not sure I could show you that in a second uh, at least close to double. Uh, well, I don't want to just show you that now. Um, so here is a a statement from my brokerage account playing with these options. And I blacked out some stuff because I have open positions on uh, some of the stocks that I recommended in my newsletter. And it would be unfair to them if I made this public on a YouTube video. So I'm blacking out that stuff. But these are closed positions. Um, I'm not sure if I recommended Baba in my newsletter, I might have, but I definitely recommended Dish. Let me check how I recommended Baba as well in my stock options newsletter. But I definitely recommended Dish. So if uh, you're watching this and you're a subscriber to my stock options newsletter, this is probably what your account looks like. But I hope you bought more than one stock option. Uh, let's see here. I'm in my Gmail account. Let me type Baba real quickly and see if I made a suggestion to buy Baba. It's running. Running, loading, loading, loading. Okay, forget it for now. All right, anyway, look how cheaply I bought this option at. It says $2.65. When you see that for a stock option, what it really means is you're buying 100 contracts. Uh, so, okay, I'm looking at my GMO now. No, I did not recommend Alibaba in any of my newsletters. That was just a stock I decided to buy into. But I did recommend Dish. So here's the Dish play. Um, you see it says 2.65. Why don't I make this bigger? 2.65. That is not bigger. All right, there we go. 2.65. Um, so I bought that plus $10 commission. 
I paid 275 bucks for that. This was on the 30th of September. So that's way at the bottom. I think that's when it started to go up. So I saw, I believe I probably saw this candlestick pattern, which is called an abandoned baby. Um, I saw that pattern. I probably also looked at other indicators. Looks like the Arun lines crossed at that time too. So I bought a very cheap stock option, very low risk also. Um, so I bought that. And then about one week later on the 9th, I sold it at 510. So we pretty much doubled it. So I got 500 bucks on investment of 275. And the Baba play is the same way. I spent $272 and I got 600 something back. And that I also held on for too long. So when you're playing stock options, you don't need a lot of money um, to in make an investment like this. You don't need a lot of money to play. Check this out. Uh, are we looking at Baba? Let's look at Baba real quickly. Check this out. For anybody who's confused about options or thinking about playing options, check out Baba. All right. Baba is priced, I thought Baba would be more expensive than Dish, but Baba is Baba's pretty expensive. Every share is going to cost you 70 something bucks. And when I bought it, it was, you know, 60 bucks. So if I had bought, if I had bought, how much money did I spend on Baba? I spent 272 bucks. If I wanted to buy, if I wanted to spend 270 bucks on Baba, I would probably only get four shares, right? And so going from $64, I don't remember how much I bought it at. Um, this was when? October 16. Where's October 16? Uh, that's when I sold it, I guess. Oh, no, no. That's the expiration date. Sorry. Bought it on the 2nd, and I sold it on the 14th. So I bought it on the 2nd when it started to rise. And I sold it on the 14th. So let's just say it went from 60 to 70 bucks. Let's be generous, all right? So that would mean if I bought four shares, I should only get $10 per share profit. So I get $40 profit, right? But in fact, I spent the same amount of money that, would, that I would spend to buy four shares of Alibaba, but I spent it on a stock option. And instead of getting $40 back, I got $300 back, more than that, right? I got over $300 back. I more than doubled my investment. And that's the power of stock options. Low risk, low cost to enter. And the only real disadvantage is that you're basically losing money if the stock trends sideways. So unlike holding stock where if the stock is sideways, you're okay. You could just keep holding on to it. Your only problem is if the stock falls, right? Um, stock options must go up. So you gotta be pretty sure of the direction of the stock. And I've spent the past, I think more than past year, I've spent a long time um, just researching the statistics of um, technical indicators and certain fundamental statistics that can help me predict the direction of a stock. That's the most important part of trading. Um, the law of large numbers plus well, that's, that's really all it is. It's the law of large numbers in both macro and micro scales. And if you know what generally happens with a stock and you know when to get in, look at Baba. Look when I got in. I got in as soon as it began its rise. And the same with Dish. You saw that date. I got it in as soon as it began its rise. So I did that for both of these stocks. And I basically doubled my money. I more than doubled my money in Baba. I basically doubled my money just because I got in when I saw the signal to buy it. So you can do that with stock options and you don't really have to worry about the stock trending sideways because once that happens, once it starts trending sideways, you're welcome to just sell it and take the profit. Stock options increase way more quickly than stock do when, uh, it's a little confusing, huh? Uh, stock options increase the upside of a stock option is much higher than the upside of buying the equivalent um, dollar value of stock. Let's put it that way. So if I were to buy four shares of Alibaba stock, it would cost me this much money, but I'd only walk away with 300 something bucks minus 
20 bucks commission. So I would have only made $20 profit. But you can see that actually I made you know, 300 something dollars profit. That's the magic of options. They're easy to trade. If you have any questions about um, the stock picks today, by the way, so let me put them on the screen for you. So here are the stock picks. If you have any questions about these stock picks in terms of um, the stock options you should buy for them, just ask me and I'll give you a recommendation for a stock option. I'll tell you what to buy. Stock options are a little more complex than stock because instead of just choosing to buy or sell. You have to choose to buy or sell, and then you have to choose a couple things. Um, what's, what's called a strike price and what's called an expiration date. So I can help you choose the strike price and expiration date if you're confused on that stuff. But I really do recommend that if you wanna get into swing trading, do it with stock options. If you don't have a lot of money, even if you do have a lot of money, do it with stock options. It's just more profitable. That's it. Subscribe and every week you will get a stock pick video, uh, well, to your email box, I guess. I don't subscribe to myself. See you later.